Hello, this is a short video just to illustrate some of the features of arrays and array lists within Java. Um, and this is using um, NetBeans. And I've got a couple of examples here of uh, things uh, using primitive data types and using um, objects in an array and in an array list. So let's have a look at what we've got. I've already written uh, this class called student, and this was one of the exercises in last week's lab. Um, student has a matric number and a name. They're both strings, um, integer, age, and a double for the average login time. There's a single constructor, four parameters, um, getter and setter for name, getter and setter for average login time, just a getter for the matric number because we don't expect that to change, a getter for the age and a method to increment the age so there's no direct setter for the age once it's set you can only add one onto it and then there's a, a two string method which I've uh, manipulated slightly to make it a little bit more readable okay so let's go to um, the main class and I'm going to do all of the code in here uh, first of all I'm going to do some examples of um, primitive uh, arrays of primitive data types so let's go with uh, an integer uh, array called a1 I'm going to keep the, the the names let's first of all let's let's try what would happen if we try to output oops, a1 we should get an error and the error is that it hasn't been initialized so that gets picked up so we're forced to initialize this thing so we can do new int uh, Let's make it quite small so it fits on the screen. Int 5. Um, now we're not getting the error, so we should be able to print that thing out. Common error is that people think that to print out an array, they just um, send the array itself to a print statement. But this is all that you get. You get um, some hexadecimal. This bit at the beginning, square bracket, identifies the array. The capital I. Um, represents that it's integers and then all the rest is just a hex code of a reference so no good to us um, if we want to print out all of the elements in an array the only way you can do it is by um, using um, a for loop uh, a1 and then if we, if we use a1 we see it's got a property length so let NetBeans choose that, and then I++, plus uh, plus open and brace, let's just indent that a bit, and then a close and curly brace, and if we run that now, we should see that, oh, <laughs> yeah, it's just printing the, trying to print the whole array out every time. We print out each element, so using the, um, uh, the loop count array, we'll find that Every element in the array has been set to zero by default, and that's what happens with primitive data types. So if we wanted to do, um, let's say, for example, if we want to do an assignment of one of these, uh, let's do uh, a3 equals uh, 7, and by mistake, let's try and do a5 equals uh, 4, and let's change that to a2. Um, so here we've got an array of five and we're trying to set the value of a five. Hopefully you know that this is going to go wrong because when it gets to um, line 19, is that what it says? Yeah, line 19, it says there's an index out of bounds. If we've got an array of size five, the indices run from zero to four. So if we change it to that, we should find now that when we print the thing out, um, the third element is now set to 7, and the fifth element is set to 4. Okay, so that's uh, that's just about it for primitive data types. Um, they can be used, Once you've got the things in the array, then uh, the for loop that I've written there will become very useful. Uh, and uh, you can look up examples of how to search, how to um, sort, and things like that. And we'll be looking at more of that in the second half of 2015. Okay, how to use array lists with primitive data types? Well, if we try array list, remember it's always a good idea to put the type after the array list in uh, triangular brackets. And I'm going to call this what was a one. So I'm going to call this a two. Uh, is a new array list. Getting the capital letters correct. Array list of integers, 
close and square brackets. Um, we've got an error. If you hold, hold the thing here, it says, oh, we need an import. So you need to actually import the library. Uh, and we do that. It does it automatically. There's still an error there. And it says, unexpected type. Required reference but found int. And the problem is that Arial is to only work with uh, objects. So we can't use primitive data types. And when we've got a primitive data type, we have to use the... Uh, the wrapper class integer. Now that may cause problems, but it, it doesn't really because Java will automatically change from int to the class integer um, with a process called auto boxing. Uh, if we try now s out, uh, what was it? A2. This should work um, because the arraylist has a two string method which is associated with it. And it will it will deal with the contents, and they will see we've got the uh, empty square brackets, so that shows that the thing has no contents. And if we do uh, a two dot, you see the methods, which we can do uh, add. It's asking for an actual integer, but what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, just an int, an int three, and I'm going to do another one, a two dot add. Um, 10. And now if you run this thing we'll see that the square brackets at the end have 3 and 10 in them with a comma. So that's something that's supplied in the Arealist class. Uh, but you can change that if you want. You can always loop through the Arealist one item at a time and print them out. And I think I'll just do an example of that. So for example we could um, we could use a for each loop. So this is um, uh, a variation on a for loop uh, and how this works is if we do for integer i within a2 what we're going to do is we're going to do an s out um, i so if we run this we find that this loops through the array and it, it takes each element in the array one by one and you can do something with it. In this example we just printed it to the screen but you could do some manipulation. So a for each loop you might not have seen any of those before, you might not remember them. Slight variation on a, a standard for loop. Okay so that's, um, that's an array of primitive variables and um, an array list. What about an array of objects? Now I've got this uh, student class so I'm going to create an array of student objects and I'm going, to go, I'm going to call this s1 equals new student I know that I have to uh, initialize it so I'll, I'll do that um, and if I tried s out s1 I would get the same problem as before because uh, you can't just output all of the contents of the array you have to go through them one by one so I'm going to change that so that it's within a for loop. So for i equals int i equals naught i is less than and what is it? It's s1 dot length i plus plus. So if you if you stick to the 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 for statement that I've just done, then everything will be fine. That's a very standard sort of uh, notation. And this is going to print out each of the elements in the array, and you find you get null, null, null. Now that's okay if you just print the things out, but if you wanted to do any manipulation with them, so say for example, we wanted to um, uh, print out. Uh, so let's take S1, the array, let's take the first element and if we use a dot we can see the sorts of things we can do because this is a student so we could do get age. Now if I run this I will get a null pointer exception. Uh, it's a bit mixed up but it's actually happening on this line here and that's because you've tried to access an element of the array but you haven't actually initialized it with the student object. We didn't have the problem with the primitive data types because they were given initial values. So you have to make sure when you have arrays of objects that each one gets initialized 
a new student oh I can't remember what the so we'd have to look at the constructor go back to the constructor matric num name age and login time so the matric number one two three four five six um the name Fred the age let's make this a mature student fifty six and the average login time zero point zero zero one that's okay. No, that's that's a sign in the first one. You should do it with the other uh, two students, but this will now mean that our um, system route or print line thing works. So you'll see that uh, get age was 56, as it says in the console window. But also now when you try to go through the array one at a time and print out the elements, it actually uses the two string of the student method, and that's why the first one says that thing there okay which is basically the the details that I put in the constructor uh, using an array list with uh, student objects is exactly the same as we've done here but because you don't specify the size of the array list when you start um, as you add the things in uh, the students in you obviously have to create the instances and that's about it I think um, that's all I need to say on that point. That should get you started anyway with arrays and arraylists.